Good evening, free enterprise community. Maybe it's good afternoon, good morning. Maybe it's the middle of the night. Time zones are confusing. I count to four for a living. My name is John Burkhead. I am so thrilled to be doing commentary for our Monday community race. And I'm very excited to geek out with someone that I have listened to many, many times, but never gotten to actually do commentary with, uh, the legendary Alice Sale. Ali, how you doing? I am doing wonderful and just excited to be here tonight with you. Um, and this is going to be an absolute blast uh, here with these uh, these throwback flags. Yep. Uh, for somebody like me, I've uh, been around since ZZ4. Um, so as I was going through the flags, uh, I had quite the education as to what you folks used to do back in the day. Back when we had uh, no objectives other than uh, either Giant Percent or Forge. Yep, uh, this is uh, this seems like a lot. So, um, uh, as I have come to learn, uh, we can go ahead and forge the crystal. Our runners will be looking for both the Adamant Rock as well as the Legend Sword, and they won't be getting an Excal or a Fiery Hammer or Scrap Metal or an Excalipur. Uh, they will be getting the actual crystal to go ahead and defeat Zeromus. That is correct. Um, these were for our World Series of Free Enterprise, our second ever tournament back at the, I believe, the end of 2018. Um, we had several different flag sets. This was one of them. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, some very old flag sets, uh, but updated to match the new, uh, the new parsing system. So we have uh, T-Standard. Uh, which our pink puffs have recently discovered the fun. That means that um, any chest that is not trapped can be a tier one through five item. You might see runners in other flag sets be looking to places like Eblin or Watery Pass for some higher tier loot. You're not going to find that here. You're going to find people going for the most density. Yep. Um, we've also, we don't have any of those newfangled things like Alt Gauntlet, um, Wyvern, Witchburn, uh, no, Wyvern's gonna yell at you, and, uh, you're going to fight the regular gauntlet if you find it. So that will be, uh, six fights instead of five, um, and, uh, very similar to the vanilla game for those of you that have played it. In addition to vanilla, probably the biggest wild card, uh, in terms of party composition is gonna be the, uh, impl uh implication of vanilla agility. So basically, this means that without a Cecil in the party, it's what we are used to, where the character in the center slot, their agility will rule. However, should we have a Cecil go into the party, Cecil's agility will become the automatic anchor. With that thought, it looks like we're off. And we are starting with a Palum, and that is a Cane, with a Dark Imp just giving us Hanzo Steel today. Yep, no, uh, I guess you folks didn't have starting kits way back when? Uh, no. So, we can expect quite a bit of looting. Uh, I think some of our more current runners, uh, such as myself, uh, have gotten used to starting with camping gear, maybe some Thor Rages, maybe some Star Veil, since you just mentioned that we're going to have uh, a very blarging um, wyvern whenever we run into them. So I'd imagine we'll see some chopping, we'll see some looting. Um, this could either be really jetty, or this could take quite some time. We have K-Moon and Summon, and of course K-Main on. We're only looking for two key items, as well as uh, a Z-Axis. So away we go. And it looks like two of our runners, Fiery Blizzard and Warlink, are going to go to the Damsian Basement, whereas E-Ninja is going to go ahead and check here in the Watery Pass. Um, there really isn't any waiting on T-Standard, so it really doesn't matter where you go. Um, just look for the densest locations. Yep. Looks like uh, Tybalt is doing an early Demis check, as we do have no free item on. And uh, maybe we're not going to see that much blogging today, because I do believe that that was, in fact, Wyvern over at Miss Cave. That is a lucky find, uh, especially with Vanilla Agility. Uh, Wyvern in a bad place can just block your progress. Absolutely. And speaking of lucky finds, uh, Tybolt has found a Dwarf Axe for sale. That is the only item that can go ahead and back row Kane. The back row glitch has been added to go ahead. Uh, that didn't exist. The option turning on and off background. <laughs> and speaking of lucky, 
He goes ahead and he just finds a dwarf axe. Why pay for it when you can go ahead and find it? That is the exact opposite of what happens to me every time I buy an item in Free Enterprise. You mean you don't want to spend 40000 on a Leviathan and find it in the next chest in Evelyn? I mean, do I want to? No. But, you know, much like my real life, do I just keep making the same mistake over and over? Indeed I do, Allie. Indeed I do. But it looks like we are going to get some Hobbs checks here on uh, Mount Hobbs, see who the character is. And that's a Porum. Well, that's an early twin. Uh, Porum gets a lot of flack for not being, you know, perhaps the greatest white mage. But I will say, she does learn Blink, Berserk, and Exit uh, much more easily than Rosa does. Uh, no Tower of Zot required for Exit, and Blink and Berserk come faster. And, uh, as Fiery is demonstrating right now, that comes with free, t uh, free Quinn, which, uh, during the later game, maybe not so great, but for the early game checks, this is wonderful. Well, and E-Ninja finding a Silent Staff, that is, honestly, I like the Silent Staff more than the Life Staff, uh, just because you can hit things with it and mute them. Um, but one of the best staffs for Porum, if they do decide to keep her. Ah, uh, very true. Uh, speaking of things that E-Ninja has found, uh, he also found a Dancing Dagger. That is something that Palum can go ahead and equip. And again, later on, maybe not the greatest item. You're probably going to look for more um, wisdom-boosting statistical gear. But for the early game, a Dancing Dagger uh, makes him quite viable before he gets his Tier 2 spells. So we have yet to see a key item check. It looks like Ninja's going to be heading there soon. Uh, uh, Tybolt is the only one of our runners to do the early Demis check. Both of those uh, came up a little bit flat. And it looks like uh, Warlink might be heading straight to Fabul after picking up Porum, uh, possibly to go ahead and get the free heal before taking on the first boss there. That is extremely heads up. Uh, something that you don't think about so much Oops. is where are your heals? Uh, how can I save time, especially when camping gear isn't in the starting kit? Absolutely. So, uh, did we say speaking of gross? Speaking of gross, uh, there's Vivalis. Now, there are certainly worse spots to go ahead and find Vivalis other than Antlion Cave. And it certainly isn't terrible to find uh, her at a, at a party when you already have uh, Kane to go ahead and knock her out of the spin. Um, but this can get a little dicey for sure. And Tybalt going ahead, uh, getting some good luck, whereas uh, unfortunately Ninja getting a little bit less good luck with the uh, Valvalis. Tybalt was able to get some tier 2 spells on that Palum during the Antlion fight. Yep, they're just going to have to, uh, unfortunately, do a bit of a reset. Um, but he did a nice little safety save there, which is pretty heads up, given all the looting that he did. I'm sure he can go ahead and make some adjustments and get through this fight, no problem. And looks like Warlink and Fiery Blizzard going ahead and taking on that Fabul. We'll see if we get the first of our key items from this. That would be pretty spicy to find it this early. Let's see what the king has for us tonight. Huh? Oh. Uh, that's not what you want to see. It's it's not. Now, uh, we, we might go ahead and uh, possibly be having, um, you know, other options. Although, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, It with on these flags, with Vivalis being um, an antline, Vivalis and Wyvern and Golbez can't block the Magma Key. Do we know for a fact that uh, Ninja will not be finding the Magma Key here? We do not. This could have the magma key, although it would not be the logical underground access. Gotcha. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So it's possible we're heading for a hook route. Um, hook route's not all bad, while it is definitely a more laborious way to go ahead and get underground. Hook does go ahead and provide us with an additional character. We are on S standard, and uh, the shop down there can be quite good. And only finding a ribbon in this spot uh, ribbon is a great item if, say, you have something like an evil wall on that hook route. Um, once you get to the crush phase, the wall is free with a ribbon. See, it's bad enough that these runners have uh, already had an early hook. Are you wishing upon them 25,200 hit points of evil wall? I mean, I know that I am because I'm not running it. But, you know, and we all know chat loves misery, right? 
Well, I was going to say Evil Wall into Ogopogo, but... Oh, oh, wow. All right. Ooh, someone woke up on the spicy side of the bed this morning. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, we have seen quite a few of our sparkles, though. We saw Wyvern, and uh, I believe we saw a another sparkle over at um, at the waterfall. So that's two down already. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of funny, because you have uh, these rude bosses between Wyvern, a sparkle, and Vivalis uh, kind of uh, off the table, which is great. But then you have a spot like Water Hag uh, in a relatively easy spot over at Kabul. And Antlion, which could be uh, uh, terrible over on Hobbs. So we've kind of seen some of our potentially worst and best bosses very quickly in this early match. And one thing we didn't mention, but is a possibility, is we do not have adamants turned off on this flag set. So if you start doing those trap chests, you could pull an adamant armor out of one of these chests. So on T standard, you have, it's going to be a random uh, tier 5 through 8, uh, with Adams being on, that is spicy. Um, the first thing I think with Overworld, and I see that ribbon, I think, okay, I can go ahead and get through the Mad Ogre chest over in Evelyn. So, um, and Adam and Armor is certainly uh, game-changing. Speaking of game-changing, uh, who is that that Warling just found? That is a Fuso Ya. Um, and he is... That is a pickup, for sure. Um, I don't think we have Vanilla Fu on, so you will still have to get levels on, or, uh, spells on him. I do not believe so either. Or we have Vanilla Agility, which again, if we find the Cecil, is going to make things interesting. Yep, that's only 700 HP there. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe we will be going over to, uh, Miss Cave and taking out a little bit of Blart one way or another. Maybe that will be happening for us. Because every time you kill a boss, he will gain uh, 100 HP, but more importantly, he will pick up three spells. Now, it does look like uh, Warlink is going to back out and start taking out these trap chests. Um, and this will be the first one of our runners to really start going after these trap chests. Uh, Staleman can be pretty nasty, especially with this party composition. But that chance of a tier 5 through 8, uh, definitely worth it. And it looks like he might be resetting out. Uh, it's possible he's just looking for some money here. Uh, although that poison axe would have uh, done some work against the stalemen. I loathe that stalemen chest. It is deceptively awful beyond awful beyond awful. I will take certain bosses over that trap chest. I will take LST traps over that stalemen chest. Because when you're at that stalemen chest, you're there a little bit early. As opposed to when you're, you know, hopefully built up for levels. Uh, as we find uh, Pirate Blizzard is uh, finding dolls over at uh, the first Baron Inn spot. Not exactly the spot you want to find that boss either. Um, but that that Stalman chest has caused just absolute nightmares for me uh, in previous runs. Would that be because they have a tendency to uh, sleep your Cecil who is covering everybody else and then they just murder your party? You know, if you're going to watch all my streams, Dally, you can at least go ahead and say hi. Um, speaking of burning the party, let's see uh, if Warlink is fast enough to go ahead and do enough damage here. I don't. I believe the only runner that knows that uh, Wyvern is over at uh, Miss Cave is Tybalt at the moment, so this should be uh, interesting to go ahead and keep track of. Uh, yeah, it's thanks to that stalemate chest I've learned that the ninja hat means you can't fall asleep. If your party is RA1, you can't fall asleep. The prisoner robe means you can't fall asleep. All information that I have gotten, literally and solely because of that Salem Trust that Tybalt is digging into right now. And Fiery Blizzard actually showed us a little bit of an interesting bit of information. Um, that Baron Inn is Dolls into Golbez. So how badly do you want that Yong? No. The answer is not even a number. The answer is, is just no. Um... I'm going to leave that for a while. That Golbez is incredibly rude in that second spot. First of all, as you know, it is so slow there. His ha 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 is like from Zootopia when the sloths are telling the jokes. That's how long it takes to go ahead and get through the fight. And second of all, everyone else is so fast that your veils go ahead and wear off after like what feels like half of a spell. Golbez there can be incredibly rude and obnoxious. Um, and if it's for a Fu, sure. If it's for a Yon, mm -hmm. See standard, I'll find somebody else. 
Now, we do have a hook route, so I will be interested to see uh, kind of what that hook route is going to look like and if runners are willing to gamble on the magma key being behind that goal bet. It's, it's true. Um, also, uh, none of our runners have really been uh, keeping an anchor so far, and I don't believe we found any cursed rings just yet. Now, Fu has a static agility of 20, but uh, that King Queen spot is incredibly fast and incredibly punchy. Now, if you fire up uh, Fu to get enough bosses, you could even do something cheeky like going to Zot 1 to go ahead and get an extra set of spells because you're really looking for Quake or Virus or, um, uh, or Nuke, uh, of course. Um, Ashura is free uh, if you know how to manage it, and all four of these runners absolutely know how to manage it. But without an anchor, that King Queen spot might be uh, incredibly rude. Speaking of rude, uh, E Ninja has found CPU at not a terrible spot, but it's always annoying to find it. I suppose it's better here than, say, um, on the back attack spot, although that Dancing Dagger, not, not great. I mean, the best way I've heard CPU described is it's always free, but you know, at a minimum, is slow. Um, if Palom had Quake, this would be one shot and you're done. Um, the uh, If you're ever wondering how much uh, HP the main CPU has, the Defender will always heal it for 10%. So when you see 231 getting healed there, that means that the CPU has 2,310 uh, HP. So one Quake would take it out. So if Ninja had a few more levels, this would be really quick. Um, He'll get through this. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Now, if you wanted to gamble, you could cast Twin and hope you get Comet. Uh, yep, that's a, uh, I believe, a 25% chance of that happening. And with my luck, there's a 100% chance that I'm not going to do that. But Tybalt is going back for that Wyvern, knows that a quick spell from Fu will take that out and get an extra three, uh, three spells. Yep, nice little run buffer there. Uh, Tibble, uh, been around quite some time. Uh, certainly knows how to go ahead and manipulate agility as needed. Um, uh, there's a lot of, of uh, acumen with Tibble and his running. Um, so uh, I'm not at all surprised to find that he had no problem getting through that. And Fiery Blizzard gonna go ahead and try and take on this Golbez, whereas Ninja and Warlink both taking on this orb. Uh, yeah, all of this looks terrible. <laughs> all four of these fights look just just awful, because Tybalt's going to find that gold as also. Uh, Ninja threw his orbs. Um, the only thing that could make uh, this ordeals any better would be a back attack plague. Um, we'll see if Ninja goes ahead and saves after that uh, time spent. He does. I think that's a very wise decision. Not that I've ever spent a lot of time in wipes. No, of course not me. No, never. Uh, getting his party set. Um, on uh, a lot of the, um, uh, the, and Odin, hmm, that's a little, so, so here's a, a situation where, uh, the starting kits would be helpful, because you can pretty much Thor Rage, uh, uh, this Odin to death. Now, this Lit 2 is going to do probably about 2,500, he's probably going to get through it, um, but this spot can be a little bit tricky if you don't have the, uh, the appropriate gear. Well, and if he is not able to get through it, we do get to see the uh, Zantetskin around the world. Can you pronounce that again? Because I've tried to say that word, and everyone... I've tried... There's a... Uh, oh, look at the... Ooh, look at the, the forward-backward Zentutsetkin, I think. That's going to get clipped for eternity. Um, uh, so Ninja, with that safety save, is going to be rewarded for his caution. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's fun. Uh, the, the back attack there, uh, you get a lot of fun effects sometimes. Uh, uh, Yang doing his kick is also very entertaining. I love the backwards, uh, Plague Counting Down. That one's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Zentetsuken? All right, Eskron, uh, I don't understand how you can go as, uh, Warlink is through. I don't understand how you can track four people and show your superiority with your, uh, with your knowledge at the same time. That's, uh, that's quite the flex, my friend. I don't track four people anymore for a specific reason. So much work. I just get to talk to you and watch people play.
The Luke D. All right. Uh, is Warp Glitch on? Warp Glitch is not on. That go uh, that Golbez might lead to a chain to somewhere very important. So Tybalt and Fiery Blizzard are going to have access to something that our other runners currently do not. And we'll get to see what the key item is here at the top of Ordeals, if it was worth it, or if it was just uh, more spells on food. That was oh, worth it. That might be worth it. Um, so speaking of spells on foo, uh, and is this even? Look at this DKC. Um, we figured out what the S stands for, Supreme Flex. So, oh, would you look at that, Allie? Fu has already learned weak. Isn't that a really interesting spell with two mages in the party and T standard where maybe gear is going to be tried, kind of hard to come by? Now, you might not be thinking about something like, uh, well, there's this machine up on the, what's it called again? Uh, 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 a Dimishin. Uh, a Dimishin that doesn't know how to Zen 2 second. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Oh, D Mission. Right? Is that right? Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's entirely possible. Um, I mean, so on on T Pro, getting into kind of our more uh, modern flags, I think D Pro tends to kind of lend toward. Ironically, people like Yang, who would be a great slingshot, uh, um, should people go back and get him late? Um, you know, when gear is difficult to come by, especially the elite gear. Uh, you might get some really nice stuff as uh, Tybalt uh, does not get the comet and gets uh, flared right in the face. Although I do love how he's just going for it and uh, full-blown just attack the uh, CPO mode. I love it. Um, uh, when gear is not guaranteed or not easy to come by, like in T-Wild or T-Wildish, mages who don't really need gear but more or less just need levels kind of uh, run king because you can get your sirens or you find a grind and you're done. Early D machine access, and you already have two mages in your party. Um, and I think we've already seen either twos for sale. I think it's very likely that we might see at least one of our runners do a D machine grind tonight. Well, and we did see also Soma drops for sale in Silvera. Uh, pop one of those on Fu, and that's eight week spells. Yeah. Um, and Fu uh, guaranteed to hit from the center slot. Um, uh, yeah, I uh, I know that if I'm running this uh, seriously and I'm, I'm trying to go ahead and win, I look at that and I just see that as the best possible play. So, uh, especially when you consider the fact that it's very much looking like a hook route. If you had underground access and you could just pick up 30 sirens, maybe you want to go ahead and do that. Especially since we don't really have a slingshot set up on Palm and Horm anymore. But, uh, yeah, uh, if you're looking for a free way to go ahead and get through a hook route, that might be it. And after um, ZZ3, we even have an easy way. The chart still confuses me. Um, I, I will never understand the Dima Sheet chart on the Giant. Uh, it's just above my pay grade. But we have a very easy chart we can use for, from Baron. We do. Uh, so, uh, so I actually did a, a video on this. Uh, one of my good friends is one of the pups. Uh, so I put it together for him and then I just posted it. Uh, so there are currently three charts that are in circulation. Uh, so you, are, I believe, are referencing uh, the step manipulation from outside of Baron Castle, because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is before my time, but during ZC3, you could not run from random encounters. Is that correct? That is correct. So with the step manipulation from Baron, you could go ahead and take on as many fights as was needed, and because you're outside Baron Castle, which is where you begin in the vanilla game, um, it really didn't go ahead and hinder you. There's also the chart that I got from Invenerable, uh, which is the manipulation on the giant, and then the one and only Martin Broadcloak has gone ahead and modernized one that one a little bit, so that instead of following the exact step path that maybe you've seen our runners do from time to time, you can go ahead and just count the, the steps while you're already on the giant. So there are, um, uh, this community is incredibly kind and generous with knowledge and information. It's one of the things I love about it. When someone discovers something, they're not gonna hoard that information to try to get an advantage in the tournament. Everyone shares everything. And so um, these are four very knowledgeable runners. The resources are out there. If our runners want to go ahead and D machine, they're definitely going to. 
Well, and it looks like um, Warlink is gonna go ahead, and that's a that's a save. Sure is. Uh, it's possible Warlink might be checking the character who Ninja's about to discover for us. If it's another mage, I mean, if it's Aridia, that's then you absolutely want a D machine. Yeah, that's six by six, and you're done. Ooh. Now we had a starting. Ma that, that changes things a little bit. We had a starting mass. So you already have, uh, and it's not Sineki, right? It is not. So you have Massa Short Sword Edge with a uh, black belt and a bandana. That's not bad. And if you find something like a Mute Knife, which is more than likely for sale in the overworld, you can get through that Ashura quite easily, and you're, now you're underground. So the appearance of that character might change the calculus completely. And I don't think if any, any of our runners did sell that for uh, petty cash, so all of our runners would be able to utilize that. Yep. Also, uh, Fiery Blizzard, uh, learning why stalemen are terrible. It's the worst chest in the game. Uh, stalemen are weak to ice, which Fiery knows, I'm guessing Fu hasn't learned that yet, but uh, Fiery's through. Let's see if it's worth it. Uh, worth the pain, suffering, and aggravation. Nope. I mean, it's money, but nope. Although I would argue very few things are worth that chest. I, 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 probably not healthy to have this strong of a feeling toward a trap chest in a video game at almost 39 years old, and yet here I sit, unapologetic. It, it is a hateful chest. A hateful chest. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, this is such a supportive community, you all get it. Uh, looks like Tybalt's doing quite a bit of shopping here. Uh, possibly looking for Ether 2s. Except he doesn't have the Darkness Crystal yet, so he doesn't know that. I mean, Ether 2s are still great. Um, might be looking for camping gear. Uh, that's a lot more. Is he so smart? I've, I have, uh, over the past year and a half, I have learned so much from your commentary. And here I sit. You're like, yep, yeah, right. that's 100%. I, I just personally hate being down at the bottom of the LST and having no camping gear and having no uh, way to get out without walking out. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a feels bad. Um, that's an entirely different walk of shame than uh, uh, might be uh, uh, can canonically appropriate in pop culture, but that's a, that's a long, sad, lonely walk back up to the top for sure. So, uh, Warlink did come back up. Uh, oh, and there's a uh, there's a free mute knife uh, right there uh, in the little barren treasury in the end. Um, that makes the hook route uh, quite free. Yep, uh, both Palum and Kane can use that. Oh, and Edge, if you have the Edge. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so uh, that is yeah. about to have a bad day. Correct. Uh, you know, I mean, if she was more authentic, you know, she's so two, three, four faced. I mean, it just, uh, you know, just be yourself. My goodness gracious, you know, but this is what happens. There are faces other than the uh, cure four face. Uh, yeah. Uh, when Riddy is in your party, and then uh, you're in a Zeromas fight without a white mage, uh, you get to see the life one, uh, one a whole lot over and over again. Six times in a row. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> oh, Al, you think I can survive six big bangs? That's so silly. Uh, uh, I did pretty well. I got four, and then I had two more gray faces on my second attempt. <laughs> and it's amazing how much the life one face looks like the troll face. Because this game came out, what, like 1992? And then the troll face became, you know, internet legend significantly after that. And yet the parallels are unreal. It would, it would make my heart sore if there was some kind of link between those. Oh, Esper, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not J-Mac. I feel like I owe J-Mac royalties for even attempting that. Well, our good friend do 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 just, uh, got flared in the face by small children, so... That's a sentence that needs a lot of explanation there, Allie. But yet, yeah, we all understand exactly what you just meant.
Alright, so, uh, Tybalt, uh, doing ordeals, possibly thinking three bosses. Let's get our foo a little more online here. Um, also, I'm loving the, uh, Final Fantasy VI, um, uh, names that he's gone ahead with. Uh, that's fun. Strago for foo? That works. That makes sense. And, uh, that lit to doing significantly more damage than our other runners, uh, getting through this hook route significantly faster uh, and going to be rewarded with that darkness crystal uh, 100% and we'll see what decision Tywalt makes after that uh, yeah so with uh, C. Neki not being on uh, that foo starts with a sork robe uh, a lunar staff and I want to say a rune ring although I feel like that's not right uh, but that sork robe plus his uh, already pre-built wisdom in uh, foo uh, versus a kitted out Halom or even Iridia at endgame doesn't really stack up, but early game in a spot like this, uh, Fu is superior and can just cut through uh, most bosses. There is a reason why we've uh, tried to restrict or just completely turned him off in tournaments. He makes things a lot easier. Yep. Uh, routing with, uh, thank you for correcting me uh, there in chat. Uh, Diamond Ring Wizard Hat. It's amazing how Possum can't hear and yet can hear my mistakes. That's uh, that's interesting there, Possum. Um, yeah, routing with Fu versus without in um, it, the flag set is almost always completely different. Um, it's uh, it's it, he is very simply that game breaking. And I do see that I think most of our runners have gone ahead and hit Kaipo. But hiding the life potions and the cabins there is awful. Yeah, that's my last location for sure. Uh, I'll go to Silvera. I'll go to Agar. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I not only is is the walk there obnoxious because you can't park in the desert. The one time this game chooses to be realistic with my flying air machine, I can't land in, in the sand, I guess, because of the physics. Um, you then have, um, you know, the grandmother version of Hodor, who blocks the way to go ahead and get to the item shop, which is buried in the inn. It's just the worst one to go to. Uh, that's incredibly trolly, there's no question. No, you get out of my way. Oh, is that her? See, see, you know, we, we're talking uh, off stream about where we're from. That's something someone for Jersey would say. I'm so proudly. There we go. All right. Make me feel like at home on our first time doing comms together. Well, that old lady must be from Jersey then, because that is what she says if you talk to her. Only if she's got a bagel and some Dunkin' Donuts coffee, all right? But if you've never, um, if you're playing this game and you've never actually talked to the NPCs, every NPC has new, um, new dialogue, except for, I believe, one. I believe one of the frogs does not. It's uh, it's actually quite, quite funny. Um, that is, uh, I don't know if that was Rivers that put that in or who took the time to go ahead and put all the jokes in. Plus, it's not just jokes. Uh, it's a lot of useful information also. Um, it's such a, a quaint, fun part of this randomizer. So that's, a, that's an amazing point. Um, if you ever have time to go ahead and not worry about speed running, but can take your time and talk to the NPCs, it's very much worth it. Absolutely. Um, it's such a great part. I believe a board was the one who put, uh, yeah, board rivers and invent because I know that extra, extra Todd smells in Baron Inn is definitely an invent thing. Or maybe Todd doesn't smell that that's a 50, 50, right? Or does oh, Todd he always smell? Does. He, he always does. Okay. I still have so much to learn. Uh, speaking of learning, Ninja going after that stalemate chest. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, and Warlink is going ahead and taking these trap chests, probably hoping for um, that adamant armor or some more Hanzo steel or basically anything that would be of use. Yeah, when I have a Palum early on or a, a Porum and I'm going to a hook route under normal circumstances, Sometimes the big get is just the XP. If you can get Palom up to Quake, if you can get, uh, you know, uh, Blink and Berserk on, on Quorum. Having a Foo in the mix kind of changes that a little bit, and we don't see any attempt to go ahead and get either one of the twins up for that matter. 
So um, you might be right. We might just be looking to kind of hit big on one of these traps. And I did not see what he got. Neither did I. I saw in chat that Tybalt didn't take the edge, and uh, that completely uh, distracted me 100%. Oh. Escrot uh, saying it is a cat claw for as that Pankras young. Would, as Pancras would say, cat claw. I don't know. It's a nice 15,000 gold. It is. Uh, and for someone like Tybalt, who has chosen. Uh, Yang over Edge for the first time in the history of Free Enterprise. Uh, please don't fact, fact, uh, fact check that. Um, you know, that's uh, not that Yang really benefits from stat boosting gear all that much, but um, I was having a bit of a hard time with the hair dryers here. This might be a wipe. Um, you know, if we get some levels on Yang, uh, two cat claws, plus five strength, plus five agility on both of them, you know, get him a black belt or a power shirt or something, uh, he'll do some work. Not to mention the fact that Cat Claws can put uh, certain enemies that don't have the boss fit to sleep, if timed appropriately. So, it is a nice piece of equipment, but you're right, more times than not, it usually gets just gets sold. And we are through those Mad Ogres, and only an Hourglass one. Ooh. Yeah, that feels bad. Uh, responded to a uh, comment in chat, uh, I agree that if there's no edge gear, we're good to go. But we did have a starting mask, uh, and there was a mute knife in the um, uh, mute knife in the Baron in Treasury. Plus, it's not Sinecki, so um, it's uh, you know if you're if you're committed to demachining, uh, I can certainly understand going for it. Not to mention the massive uh, HP that Yang ends up getting. Um, but just on spec alone, it's it, it's a little odd to go ahead and see uh, you know Edge getting turned down really almost under any circumstance. And Tybalt taking another shot at this uh, hairdryer's chest, and Ninja dropping the palum for that food. Yep, yeah, uh, might be trying to maybe get the party balance. It also looks like Ninja is going to be our first runner to go ahead and attempt the hooker out here. So uh, probably sooner rather than later, we're going to go ahead and get a look to see who's in that king queen spot. We already know that it's a sure in the ruby spot. You know what Tybalt could uh, probably use? An Hourglass one. I was going to say 30D machines. Well, I'm oh, 30. <laughs> Listen, I can talk for a while, but I don't know how many things we really have to talk about here. <laughs> it's like 30 sirens in a dream, except for um, everybody's like level 75. I mean, you know. Uh, unfortunately, Yang's uh, HP does uh, cap out at 6,000, so uh, that would be a. Uh... A uh, bit of a mess, but it looks like uh, Tybalt's going for it. So you had one job, and that was to take out these Mad Ogres. Off slot, Foo? Missing a stone? Has that ever happened in uh, Free Enterprise? Only when you don't want it to. Oh, got it. Uh, to answer your question in chat, 30 Sirens in a Dream, I'm not sure who coined it, but we all use it. Um, basically, uh, 30 Sirens, if you are underground, you can go ahead and uh, crack some eggs. There's a, a couple of spots in the underground where when you uh, use a siren, you will get an egg, which uh, there are plenty of ways to go ahead and safely kill. Not that there isn't some risk <laughs> that I've found myself, but... Um, Rydia uh, is the black mage who takes the longest to go ahead and learn nuke, but 30 sirens will go ahead and get her there. So if you get underground access early enough and you have the funds and you have uh, black mages, crack your 30 sirens and you have the dream of early nuke and then you go ahead and blow up the game. Well, and it looks like uh, Tybalt has decided, yeah, I think I'd like nuke and uh, white and uh, angry punch. Yep, so he's getting his party set up here. Um, it's a pretty good party to go ahead and do this with. We have a, a, a white mage who will go ahead and be able to recover from uh, the um, recover from the fires. Each each fire will take out 20% uh, of the health. Um, it looks like he might be getting a peek at who our Elman's character is first. We are still on a Demist hunt, and uh, Demist would be hilarious here. Cool. 
so much better. Yeah. Yeah, and no. we've got Karate here. Um, this is kind of rude in this spot because uh, he hits very hard. And he's very, very fast. Uh, Berserk will help, and so will a relatively powered up Fu. Uh, but this is... Uh, that illusion's pretty nice uh, if Ninja ends up using it. He's probably fine, but that doesn't mean that this wasn't a little bit rude to begin with. Um, but, uh, yep, yeah, Highbolt, it looks like he's doing the step manipulation uh, on the Giant. Uh, he has Fu in the center slot, which means that the weak casts will be guaranteed to get through. Um, I'd be curious to see how many uh, he does. A, I think it's what, a level 18... Uh, uh, was that a level 18 um, uh, Palom? So yes. we might be looking at maybe 11, I want to say. 11 plus 11, with Life Glitch being on. Uh, sure. There's a chart for this, too. Uh, there is. There is. Uh, and on spec, it looks like uh, Tybalt has found the fight. So um, so the big question with the grinds is, will you go ahead and get the time back? So you have someone like Ninja that is uh, just getting down the, ho the hook route. You have Fu. So let's just go ahead and and, and do it. You have Warlink, who is um, on the giant. You have Hyrule Blizzard, who's taking a look at a vanilla Bahamut. That's free. If this has one of our pieces of forge, that could be a huge advantage for uh, for fiery blizzards. Um, Have but, we found star bales? Uh, nope, and we haven't found the wall spell either. Oh, well, we have, except uh, okay. So the magic here is pretty low, um, and the HP here is pretty high. Uh, and walls don't last as long as Star Veil. So even though this fight is free, uh, this might be a little bit tricky to navigate. Um, because if the wall falls off... Oh, he does have Star Veils. Because uh, if the walls fall off at the wrong time, that can be a uh, little catastrophic. And Tybalt actually finding the Horseman fight and not the, uh, the correct D-Machine fight does have to reset because the amount of XP difference is just you, you cannot do one instead of the other yeah that's uh that's definitely it feels bad uh speaking of feels bad it looks like ninja did not come across uh that mute knife which is completely understandable on a spot like t standard you know um who's to say that you're gonna go ahead and find it uh it looks like he will be through the fight um it's just going to take uh, a little bit of time here. Uh, this sure will have 25,200 uh, bits uh, of HP. Um, he has um, Edge Zerked up, and the shirt was nice enough to go ahead and give a uh, cure for there. Uh, this may be a little bit of concern. I'm not sure if he cast Wall or reflected a Star Veil. Um, at some point, it will go ahead and drop off, uh, but hopefully Ninja will get through with no problems. Yep, um, there are so many new ways to take on Ashura, but uh, I, I prefer the tried and true method of double star veil, and you don't have to try and time things. Yep, uh, my preferred method is uh, getting to the point where Cure 4 doesn't actually Cure 4, and uh, we just go ahead and do what we have to do. Uh, so, it looks like Tybalt maybe bought uh, Notices, which is not something you buy very often. That casts Ice 1, which is why you don't buy them very often. Um, Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Well, um, when you... Uh, this is going to get real interesting real quick. When you punch a D-Machine, it punches you back. Uh, and if you don't... If, if you happen to go ahead and punch before... Uh, the weakest cast, you're not going to take it out with one swing. So, High Bolt is in a little bit of trouble. It's very easy for these things to go ahead and go sideways, and that unfortunately is in fact a reset. We talk about how um, some of the we the way we talk about things like the machine grinds and stuff like that. It makes it sound so easy, but there are so many ways that this can go sideways that. Um, you don't realize how hard it is until you try. Absolutely. Um, especially when you consider that Fu is our anchor. Fu has a uh, base agility of 20. Uh, and if you look at the party members, uh, you have some extremes. 
gain an edge tend to kind of fast, how informed can be a little bit on the slow side. And as you're trying to figure out your turn order, uh, which you see Warling kind of going through right now, it's not easy. Um, it's very difficult. Uh, that uh, Porum is probably down to go ahead and try to minimize some of those issues, which is a very heads-up decision for Warling. Um, these are tricky. Um, there's a reason why people groan about doing them. Uh, number one, they're, they're boring as sin. And number two, the monotony can almost get to you a little bit. You can lose track as to how many you've done, and you can forget that you ran out of, uh, you know, uh, magic and you need to go ahead and do an ether, but it's your time to go ahead and do a week. There's a lot of things that can go wrong here. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of focus, and uh, it can be quite difficult. This is also one of those uh, fights where Rydia's Sylph is deceptively or not deceptively, but incredibly useful, because you can self the D machine, get back your HP, and you don't have to worry about that 10% drain every time. Absolutely, and the self glitch is on, so you don't have to worry about running uh, out of magic. Um, but we have a little bit of a spicy play here. Uh, we have Fiery Blizzard uh, at 43 minutes. Uh, notice that K-Moon is on. We have a Foo, apparently an hourglass. And uh, we have Fiery maybe trying to go ahead and without the levels. And I don't believe that Fiery has even gotten underground. We are doing moon checks before we are doing anything else. If we can find King Queen Evelyn, the uh, that's could be free. If you can, so, uh, for those that don't know, uh, with Octoman, um, at the first three attacks. Uh, It'll start to lose, uh, visually, go ahead and lose tentacles. And then every two attacks afterwards, it will lose another tentacle until you're down to just one. Every time you lose a tentacle, uh, it will go ahead and slow down. So sometimes it's a race to go ahead and just do, do attacks to get through the beginning part of it and then kind of get caught up afterwards. Um, Fiery's in a little bit of trouble here. He's looking for... Trying to decide if he wants to spend the time for damage or do something that will quickly go ahead and uh, get the spell off. Looks like he decided to go ahead and split the difference. So that lit 2 will slow him down a little bit, but this is a little dicey. Um, but Ninja uh, is our first runner uh, to go ahead and get underground. If our Adamant Rock and Legend Sword are underground, Ninja has a very distinct advantage. And Ninja finding out that King Queen Eblen are at the top of tower, so we're not going to have that free fight on the moon. No, and we've already seen um, uh, Water Hag, so we know that's off the table. Um, and with the... Uh, I haven't done a lot of uh, traditional gauntlet. The stats of the enemies in the traditional gauntlet are scaled to the spot. Is that correct? I... I don't believe so, but I don't remember. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and find out. Uh, yep, there are no J-drops, which uh, I had Escrunt, uh, who has clearly destroyed his, or, uh, demonstrated his superior knowledge, uh, did confirm for me uh, that, in fact, there is no... Uh, that means that Sirens can also not be sold, which honestly might have been a big part of the decision-making uh, for our runners to go ahead and do D-Machines. <laughs> Especially since we haven't seen sirens for sale yet, we do have two more shops, but there is a chance that they are not in the sea. I believe there is a 10% chance that a specific tier 5 will not be in a gated item shop. I think that's correct, but I'm not 100% on it. Um, uh, looks like Warlink has decided that he is done. We'll see if we go ahead and lure Duke on Palom or not, or if he's just going ahead and getting close. That's Cure 4 and that's White. Um, so that's, and that takes Quorum forever to go ahead and learn, so that's huge. Yep, um, uh, we've got Nuke on the child, we've got White on the other child. Uh, let's go destroy the rest of the seed. Yeah. Uh, Fiery uh, looks like uh, things might have stabilized a little bit. The uh, speed might be slow enough now where, uh, despite a bit of a scary beginning, uh, he might be able to go ahead and get through. A Berserked uh, Edge that is also blinked is going to continue to do some work. Um, who gets blinked on himself as well, and I think that gets him through. 
and our job dwarf tonight is a school psychologist. E ninja, man of the people, we thank you very much. And since we are doing a throwback race for this, there's our sirens. Um, that was added, gosh, forever ago. That was an idea from Rex Raoul, a longtime community member, who said, well, what if the dwarf had different jobs every time? These are the uh, these are the things I love to love to learn, love to hear about. I had no idea that that was the uh, where it, uh, it came from. Yep, in the vanilla game, he says, "I'm a farmer." Didn't know that either. What do you what do you farm underground? What's the soil like? I, I, exactly. That's uh, that's uh, that's something. So, uh, let me ask you, if you're Warlink, and you just completed a D-Machine grind, and you have levels, and you have foo, um, are you going to the moon, or are you going to go to the hook route now and go underground? That's a hard one. Um, honestly, I would have taken on the giant just on the off chance that the D-Machine is up, or not the D-Machine, uh, the D-Mist is up there and holds everything. Yeah, that, um... You know, uh, it was pointed out in chat that Mom Bomb, while punchy up there, and there's a lot of um, a lot of HP, uh, because of the script that exists with uh, Mom Bomb in terms of when the explode is triggered versus uh, having off the HP before it actually does the explode. Um, very rarely will you go ahead um, and have a uh, a Mom Bomb actually explode up there, especially once you've completed your grind and you have levels and you have nuke, etc., etc., etc. So, um, you know, at first it might look like it's a huge time sink to go ahead and do that, but it really isn't. Uh, not to mention the fact that you get even a little extra uh, XP. No 10 key items, and the uh, XP is split with the other bomb ones, but still, a little bit, it can't hurt. And it looks like Fiery Blizzard getting the uh, Earth Crystal from that Octo Mammoth Chuck is uh, please, I would love to go uh, see what this leads me to. We can rate that T standard treasury. That'll be fun. Oh, the value. The value. Uh, looks like that's where we might be headed. Um, two boss checks, two bosses for foo. Um, if we get a Rosa there, uh, that Rosa will automatically have exit. Um, aw, Fiery. Fiery, very very well aware that that uh, treasury is not going to be like your typical treasury that we see on these restreams. Um, not to mention the fact that Fiery has got a decent amount of levels from those moon checks between the Bahamut and the Octoman. Looks like he might be looking for a doggo to go ahead and pet, though. I mean... I'd really like another piece of edge gear, or an adamant armor, or anything. So even a, even a heroin rub would be nice. Go ahead and fast anchor this first spot. Uh, first spot on Zod is very, very slow. That'd be good for Porm. Throw, throw it right in the center. Yeah. A little more exciting if you have Iridia for the Wisdom Boost, but uh, it's a nice piece of defensive gear. Um, doesn't do much for Forum's magic, but keeping her alive, as she is more than likely your primary healer, uh, who more than likely will be utilized for offense. So, worth the time. A little bit of a uh, little bit of safety, not the worst thing. And it looks like things are getting a little bit hairy for uh, Tybalt, but does manage to get the D-Machine down, now can take the time to get his party back up. Yeah, they look like exhausted babysitters, don't they? Like, they just gave up trying to go ahead and take care of these rambunctious kids. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little rough. But, a uh, nice part about these is even when things go a little bit sideways, as long as you can find a way to get through, you have plenty of time to go ahead and recover. Um, and and Tybolt has invested quite a bit of time uh, into this one, so uh, that would have been quite painful, uh, especially since uh, the first time he uh, didn't find the fight, and then I believe he might have had it all wiped the second time. So um, I'm certain that he's feeling quite relieved to still be alive and kicking through this. And Ninja finding a Moon Veil, which is actually a really nice item to pick up, especially with that Octo Mammoth. Um, if this is a required Earth Crystal, uh, that fight is completely free with a Moon Bale. Yep. 
Uh, speaking of completely free, at some point Warling found a Runax, and that is a very angry Caden. Doing a casual 8500 with one swing. 8888. Eight, eight, eight. No, that's got to be. And, uh, oh, 9999. I guess Warling found the mute knife. Yeah, that, that Asura just melted. Yeah. And, uh, oh, look! Who in the center slot? Missing a stone cast. But that mute knife doing work on those mages as well. And I haven't been keeping track of how many D machines uh, we are up to, but Tybalt's got to be getting close. I want to say 84 is what it feels like. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, the HP on Yon uh, once he's done, though. Speaking of things I'm not excited to see, that's an Edward. I love nothing more than yeeting an Edward off the top of the Tower of Zot. Oh god, it's so cathartic, isn't it? I, like, the spoon flag is on, for those of you that are wondering, but ugh. That's a... Uh, ugh. ugh. Uh, uh, I, I'm surprised writing. I haven't been muted yet. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, I mean, well, maybe we have. Maybe we're just talking to each other. We don't know. Uh, and a little bit of vanilla with a Rosa getting saved there. I doubt either one of those get taken just because of the time and effort already put into this party. I would agree with that as well. Looks like they both got uh, tossed. Uh, speaking of time and effort, uh, Tybalt is done. Uh, that is a nuking kid. That is a, uh, a very well-stacked party. And we have a very lost Kainatso, right fiend, wrong location. It's just a big water slide. Well, that's a fun way of looking at it. Except, uh, I don't know. You ever look at the, the Kenatsu sprite, like the face, very, very closely? Like, I never... I don't know when I actually, like, paid attention to it, but it is it is straight up horrifying. It is just... It's it's the thing that nightmares are made of, for sure. So I'm very glad to see you getting nuked right in the face and uh, evaporating into nothingness. Yeah, that was part of our uh, shtick for ZZ5, where all of the bosses were zoomed in for the tracker. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, that is straight up horrifying. But we're going to get some new checks here. Uh, Ninja's looking at the top of tower, knowing that it's free. Uh, Fiery is through uh, Zot, and Warlink is doing Dwarf. So after uh, our runners kind of crisscrossing uh, each other quite a bit, we have a lot of new information coming right now. Sorry, Cecil, you're just a little too late here. And that chain that Fiery started from Octoman to Earth Crystal uh, goes to Twin Harp. And we'll see if uh, we're going to commit to this run, and we are. So if this leads to uh, one of our two required key items with uh, Legend Sword or Adamant Rock, this is a huge uh, success for Fiery. If this ends up being some sort of painful zonk, as Twin Harp often does, um, that's gonna that's gonna feel kind of bad. So, um, Fiery's either to be uh, significantly out in front, or unfortunately, perhaps a little bit behind. But either way, chat get music, and chat loves music. Music is a fantastic thing. Um, I believe we are up to five hundred songs. I'm just gonna make up numbers. Um, all put in by we have those by Boardface, Calm Lamity, Xenocat, um, just so many wonderful harp songs to get rid of the very boring song that Edward plays. Because when you're a speedrunner, you don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. When you're a speedrunner, you want to find your objectives. And Warlink just did. That is the Legend Sword coming out of Dwarf Castle. Um, and uh, ooh, Harem Rover Sale, that's nice. Um, I wonder if, with Warp Glitch being turned off, if Warp Castle is going to be something that our runners are somewhat likely to go ahead and put off till later. Because with two bosses, it takes a little bit of time. Um, and especially with D-Machine, you might want to go ahead and, and full clear the moon because you have the levels for it. Uh, it might be a while before some of our runners find that Legend Sword. I think Ninja will find it soon. 
but for Tybalt and for Fiery, I'm not so sure. And because chat will yell at me, I won't talk through music tonight. Oh, but I will. Then they'll just yell at me, right? Like, cause I feel like... Uh, how would I explain this? So, it all started when I was a music teacher, and, uh, and I've been doing it for 17 years, and when you... When you are a tenured teacher of it, you know, you just feel like you have the right to go ahead and do certain. And I have absolutely no idea what that was, but I do know that Fiery is through. Let's see how this chain pans out for him. Oof. Ooh. That's, uh... That's a feels bad that we have all experienced. Ah. Xenoblade 2, thank you for the check. So, uh, Ninja and Warlink did find a casual curse ring. Uh, if you keep a Foo, that is a guaranteed anchor. Um, throw a curse ring on Foo, and Foo's agility automatically goes down to 5. That is a disgusting, disgusting Bay March. I know that we have mage killing gear, and so it's probably fine, but the magic at that Ashura spot is quite high, and that Ashura spot is quite quick. Uh, so that cursed ring is actually huge. And Vigan over at the Leviathan spot is, um, uh, it, it's not a good time, Alex. It's not a good time. Yeah, Bygan there is probably in the top three of it's the last thing I do in the seed. Uh, Morling showing off, uh, 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 getting his agility set up, not to mention using his mage killing gear. Um, and uh, I know Warlink made that look really easy. Uh, believe me, um, that's not a boss that you want to go ahead and find there. And Tybalt is going ahead and taking. Oh! <laughs> Well, uh, that's go mode. Moon's haunted. Moon is, uh, quite haunted. That's, uh, well, that's go mode at one hour. And, uh, we had talked about how at the beginning of, the, of this restream that this could either be, uh, you know, when you're only looking for two key items and you have K-Main and Moon and Summon on, that, um, you know, this could be Jetty or this could be not. And you have perfectly valid decisions. You have key standards, so you don't want to take characters that have uh, required gear. You have early Foo and early Darkness, so you D-Machine. And if you have a high density of checks that you can do on the moon and the levels to do it, there's nothing wrong with just full clearing the moon while you're up there. There's nothing wrong with it. It makes total sense. Um, there's also nothing wrong with just going ahead and, and going down and doing the density of checks underground. And oh my goodness, between Legend Sword at Dwarf Castle and having the Adamant Rock over at, uh, uh, in the Fame Arch, uh, Moon is Haunted, and, uh, that's that. And Warlink remembering to do the most important thing on a Forge Percent Seed and, uh, Forge the Crystal. Yeah, uh, I would put that in the same vein as, uh, forgetting that you don't have the pass and then trying to get to Zermos from there. Um... Or uh, trying to go ahead and turn the rat tail when you don't have the hook. Uh, there's there's something extra special about staring at Zeromas, looking for the crystal in your inventory, and uh, having that moment of regret. 
Yep. And, you know, it's almost like he's laughing at you with every shake as you're trying to figure out where it actually is. Especially if you don't have the pass and you've already walked down the moon. Ah, uh, that is correct. Um, and, if, uh, as you mentioned before, if we don't have exit to go ahead and get back up. Uh, I believe Warlink uh, also found the Cursed Ring. Uh, he's blinded, and uh, he does not have the pass. Uh, not quite sure where he's going. He does not have all spells on Fu. He does want to go ahead, take out the spot here, completely power up that Fu, and then will likely take on Zeromus. Yeah, hope he's not still slow anchored. Uh, looks like he's still on a uh, lower battle speed, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's uh, Warlink is uh, almost certainly going to be our first runner on Restream to go ahead and um, and to an, our uh, Zeromus fight. Um, Ninja is about to go ahead and get his Legend Sword, and Tybalt and Fiery uh, continue again a perfectly legitimate route uh, going through the moon. But it's just gonna, unfortunately, as we know, but they have no way of knowing, it's gonna lead to rabbit holes and zonks. And each of those rabbit holes, they are honestly more or less obligated to go ahead and find. It's really possible, um, I would almost say likely, that our runners might end up last locationing um, uh, that adamant rock behind Magus Sisters in the Fae March. And this is absolutely disgusting. Uh... Yep. This, de uh, this demist is going to hit hard, and there is no fast way to do it. Uh, that is correct. Um, the only good news about this is that uh, when demist goes into miss phase, you'll be able to go ahead and uh, recover a little bit uh, from the punches, uh, get some blinks up, and kind of get set up here. But um, that is not a cursed foo, so that's a 20 agility foo, um, which means that demist is going to also be quite quick. Um, you might be able to get a couple of slows off at some point, but um, there's no way around it. This is not a quick fight, even with Nuke. It'll be a little faster for Tybalt, uh, as that Palom has Nuke, so you have uh, double spells going through. Uh, you cannot cast White, um, which would be tempting, but uh, Demist actually absorbs all holy. Uh, a lovely bit of programming that was done so that um, Demist would be weakness, weak to the uh, Dark Knight abilities of Cecil uh, in the early vanilla game. And Warling actually just made a very heads up play. Um, went and got that uh, Cecil that is going to be base level. This is vanilla agility, so I'm gonna go ahead and have that Fu able to cast spells. Yep, uh, I believe base level agility starts with, I want to say Cecil is 13 at base level, and Warling picked up that cursed ring, which will bring him right down to one. That's a really smart play. And Tybalt and Fiery Blizzard, of course, uh, taking on this Demist. Um, you can't, on no free key item, you cannot just leave a Demist. That is two potential key items here. And you do have you do have ways to kill it. It just takes forever. But when you haven't found either part of your uh, of your forge. And you've made this active decision as, as time holds us through. You made this decision to go ahead and do this moon dive. You're 100% right. You are completely obligated to go ahead and get through this. Oof. And only finding a Bahamut orb. Ugh. And hopefully, you don't forget to uh, check that. We know that it's nothing, but uh, our runners don't. And. Mama Rydia could sometimes have uh, the other half of your forge. It's true. Uh, looks like uh, Fiery might be out of ethers, because I think we have a psych that is uh, queued up on the Taken Palum. Um, so, depending on how much damage uh, Fiery has done here, uh, as Tybalt mercifully finds a free boss over here uh, in the Ribbon Room. Um, uh, Hopefully, uh, there's enough damage that has been done on this uh, Demist that uh, with this uh, influx of MP stolen from Palom, we'll be able to go, to go ahead and get through this soon. And once Fiery gets through this, um, the uh, Dark Imps will be a great influx of uh, XP for him, especially if he can get some life glitches off. Uh, this can give a ton of experience for Fiery Blizzard. 
that's a very solid point. So that was an artery, that was an arty bow, and was that adamant armor for Tybalt? Yep, that was an adamant armor. So that's got to feel good, for sure. Uh, not quite the progression he was looking for, certainly, but uh, not the worst thing in the world. And it looks like Warlink is getting ready to do this final dive. Yep. And so uh, Tall Grant uh, either has fallen asleep or perhaps has a uh, question for us. Um, Allie, as a uh, experienced runner of this, have we always been randomizing the Zoroma Sprite from day one, or was that a uh, an innovation that came about later on? I think that if it didn't from the beginning, it was very, very early. Um, board was the one doing the uh, Z Sprites to begin with, but then Scala took over. Well, they've all done just a wonderful job, uh, as I'm sure almost all of you know. Oh, since day one. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Zeromus uh, cannot be randomized with the rest of the game. He is simply too big, too bad, too terrible. Uh, so we found a way to go ahead. By we, I mean uh, Ward and Scala and other people much before my time have found a way to go ahead and um, uh, randomize him. And we uh, randomized the sprite. So I believe we have over 600 sprites, so I'm just making numbers up, uh, that Zeromus might be, which leads us to a question that you'll hear on almost every single restream. Um, I believe the question is, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? And since this is a throwback, I think it's a nice time to point out that uh, as the months and years have gone on, we've had all kinds of ancillary questions that have been added on to it. Is butt cute? Does it have a butt? Does it wear a hat, 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 hat? Uh, honestly, uh, this is actually a nice little reminder of just how uh, fun this community can be and the memes that we all go ahead and, uh, and create here. Absolutely. Um, this is one of the best communities, definitely the best community I've ever found. Um, just so welcoming, so wonderful. Uh, and we are going to get our sprite for tonight. Let's see who we got. Yes! 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 <laughs> oh, a little, a, little bit of, a little bit of Space Jam there. Oh my goodness. This is Michael Jordan. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm very excited. This is my sprite. I've only ever seen it once in the wild. <laughs> oh. It's not very often you see a lot of sports in... Uh... Ooh, that was a quick shake. It's not very often you see uh, uh, sports in... Uh... Free Enterprise, uh, and yet here we are. Uh, I hope this, um, uh, I hope this Silk Web gets off. That shake was quite quick. Um, Sorry. Sorry. Oh, um, you're, okay. you're so excited. Look at you. This is awesome. Um, we do see the Silk Web get out, as well as uh, lots of uh, very nice spells. Uh, counter nuke coming out on that palum. Less than ideal. Ooh, and that palum is going to go down. So it's definitely uh, still doable with just nuke and white, but the um, booze nukes are not going to be the same as um, as palum. So uh, it would not surprise me to see fire use uh, edge to go ahead and get palum back up here. Um, uh, Ninja did find a vanilla pan, which is just incredibly mean. Um, uh, Tybalt took on elements at a less than ideal spot. That admin armor came in quite handy because uh, Ruby is pretty rough there. Uh, but let me ask you, so when you say this is your sprite, what's the uh, what's the story behind that? Um, so I believe it was for Fabul Gauntlet. Um, I won one of the raffles that we do for our restreamers and our commentators. And this was the sprite I picked. I am originally from the Chicago area. I grew up during the heyday of uh, Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Um, and so this is from uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, somebody had it. Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. Uh, really bad video game from the 90s. Um, and it's awesome and I love this. Oh my goodness, uh, I, I love that story. I, I always thought this was Space Jam, so I had no idea. Um, 
So we're going to have to hope to survive an unnerved Big Bang here. This is a little scary. Um, as Tybalt finds a rat tail, it's hopeful that's going to lead to something, but of course we know that it won't. Let's see how Whirling does here. And who survives? Now, if who is if, if they're close here, because um, we're going to get a black hole in just a moment, um, if we're one nuke away, then the last one can be direct. So you have to wonder um, what the plan is here. Uh, I guess with the Star Veil going out, we're going to go ahead and play it safe. Um, we'll see if this uh, goes ahead and kills. And also, it looks like we're trying to get Palm back up here, so um, it's a little bit scary. Uh, it's a good thing that we reflected because uh, that otherwise would have tipped. Um, so really heads up of Warling to recognize the situation to go ahead and get the Cure 4 off, and we'll see if this nuke does the trick. And Tybalt actually found the rat tail into the pink tail, so got another adamant armor. So it's great for power overwhelming, but maybe not great otherwise. Um, we have a Cure 4 queued up. I'm not sure it's going to get off. I think we really need this nuke to go ahead and kill. That nuke spell is still there. I can't hear it, but you all can see it and hear it. Warlink, get your GG's in chat with a final time of 1 hour, 13 minutes, and 0 seconds. What an absolutely fantastic run. Uh, our, uh, not only our winner on Restream, but also our first uh, winner overall. What a fantastic, wonderful run by Warlink. And we'll see if we can't get him in for an interview. Uh, meanwhile, a very, very beefy Tybalt is going to go ahead and follow the check that Fiery Blizzard did earlier. Um, uh, going to Earth Crystal, which we know will lead over to Twin Harp, uh, which will also then go ahead and lead to, I believe, a Power Shirt. Um, and then I think the only option uh, Tybalt's going to have at that point, mercifully, is to go ahead and go underground. Um, if this had led also to Baron Key, that would have been another few checks. So uh, Tybalt will eventually get back on track. Uh, looks like Fiery Blizzard, looking for a little more XP, uh, has taken on some trap chests. And e Ninja did, uh, unfortunately, go ahead and forfeit. Totally understandable. Um, if you're not having fun, don't play the game, is what I always say. Life's too short to do things that you're not enjoying. Could not agree more. Uh, looks like uh, Warlink might be joining us, but he needs just a moment. So, uh, ooh, speaking of fun trap chests, I will take this trap chest over over the stalemate. I will die on this hill. For as awful as this trap can be, uh, we uh, lovingly refer to this as Bimmy and Jimmy, because they are double dragons. Uh, ooh, uh, Kane's got punched in the face uh, quite hard. Um, uh, I will still take this one uh, over uh, over that stalemate chest anytime. Just as long as you take out the right dragon, um, because uh, if you take out a certain dragon, it gets very angry if it's alone. And if it you does. don't have an adamant armor, it, it gets does. very angry. Yeah, that heat ray can be a little bit rough, okay, but, but, but who's fine? We're fine. Everything's fine. A little scary, but we're fine. We're a little low on, uh, uh, we might not be as fine. Uh, we get into the back row there, that's pretty heads up. Uh, maybe we get a uh, cure pot on here. Uh, going to the back row is an excellent little bit of recovery. We've got good uh, HP. Really nice recon uh, recognition of the situation. Uh, we're seeing that back row adjustment uh, just be wonders over here. Yep, uh, back row is definitely with an adamant armor. There isn't much that's going to get through that that defense. And uh, just going to steal the MP from the uh, from the enemy. That's very I think, heads up. I think it's a perfectly valid, uh, valid choice. Um, speaking of valid choices, I think that when Tybalt is in go mode, um, that uh, he's just going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and take out uh, this uh, wyvern or the, the Z because his levels are looking quite beefy. And Fiery Blizzard has taken out this, but with that bidding, we are joined by Warlink. GG's to you. Oh. Like, how? Did everyone get baited by everything else?
Uh, that is correct. Uh, when you have a shiny Foo, you have a shiny Darkness Crystal and uh, T Standard and some shiny mages. Uh, I think people just want to go ahead and go to the moon and blow things up. Uh, and your Spidey Sense was tinkling to go underground, and it was correct, my friend. Yeah, I had, I was, I know I had that mutant from Baron N, I don't want, and I got that Runex from the, um, the Lunar Passageway. At that point, I was like, okay, sure, it's now, um, it's now free. And I did that, and just basically went underground and did Dwarf Castle first because I needed to get boost some spells to get up to nuke. That didn't w went out and found that Cecil that it's like, okay, he's a potential anchor because I have a Dwarf Axe to use him as a jelly anchor. And then I picked up a Curse Ring somewhere that's like, okay, then if I need to, who's a anchor for the time being? And so that Magnus is like, oh, they're 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 going to have a bad day with my uh, uh, Edge and Kane and when that when that other half of Forge popped, I was like, "Wow, this either I got lucky with my routing, or someone else is ahead of me." And I, there was no like zero. There was a hundred percent at least one person did it in front of me because I botched getting, uh, uh, getting Kane up to five levels above the twins to slingshot them. So. I still cannot believe I. I still, I still cannot believe I finished first in this race. I think it's a really good recognition of your situation. You know, I, I've been saying all stream that on T standard, you know, equipment can be so hard to come by, but you found the Moon you found the Runax, you see that you have a Shuro right there. Um, you know, so you can get underground no problem. You have a food. You need spells. With no warp glitch, doing dwarf castle might not be appealing because of the two bosses, but for you it's great. And so you go there, and then you hit it, and then you go into the Fey March because those are freebie. You go ahead and you check out your bosses, and you see what could normally be terrible. Magus can be awful there, but you knew that you were anchored. You could get through it. I think it's just a really good heads up, present awareness of this is my party, this is what I have, and what you can do, and it panned out beautifully for you. I don't think it's luck at all. I think I think you just recognize your situation, you ran with it. And you found your spots. Yeah, and when I went to Fanwars, like I, I'm already set up to take out whatever's down there. And seeing Bagan Magus is like, okay, these two are doable. I'll do Magus first because I already have set up to cut through them like hot knife through a cold, cold stick of butter. So that drop is like, oh great, I'm I'm in go mode. Who's ahead of me right now? I'm just who's either who's ahead of me or. Did everyone got baited with that uh, going up to the uh, going up to the moon? Um, I saw this spoiler log that Baron just dropped the loopy key. Um, I'm, I'm glad I reset out of Gobez because I know at the point, okay, either Demus is up in Zot One or the waterfall. I haven't checked there. Either Demus is up those directions, hold the magma key, or this is the hook route. At that point, it's like. Okay, I could try to get that um, that Yang for that to get Slingshot set up, but I remember. Oh wait, I have the Darkness Crystal. I can check the character up there. If it's either Edge, Sid, Vu, I can Slingshot the kids. And luckily, it was the Edge, and I have stuff for him to um, handle with. So I did the D my and so um, I did check the Elmas spot. So. I'll, Bomb bomb right there. It's like, uh, <laughs> unless Demus is behind there pulling progression to one full pass of forage, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pull. Yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, that all uh, that all makes a lot of sense. Um, you would have taken on that Bygan, uh, with your party as it was, uh, if a Magasus didn't have go mode. Yeah, my route is just take Magasus back Bygan, um, Top of tower was uh, King Queen. I would have been cheeky and just go up there, uh, say, come and check what's up there because recently, re recently, Keyless Tower has been, been to play, and then do the Sheila checks and go from there. I'm stay on the moon because uh, K main checks has are uh, way more to have Key Islands than up in the moon, so that's why I went with. 
and then then the second half of Forge came, I was like, okay, that's that's everything. Hopes Coco has Star Dust Rods or Life Staffs to get through that Zoramas fight. Well, and that uh, that shop definitely bailed you out there with those life staves. Yeah, for that Porum, I could pick one up for Boo, but he's doing nuke, doing all, all that stuff. And uh, luckily, I was able to recover after the second Big Bang that I tanked it. And just like, okay, this is recoverable. If I can get um, get the wall up and get you on the spell casting and while poor I'm trying to revive the rest of the mages up this is doable and luckily the third big bang didn't went off I I was like on the edge of my seat is like oh please don't go off please don't go off and I was there uh, it, I believe that was enough yeah, yeah you know right recognizing your HP and and uh, seeing the shake it was a really uh it was very heads up to go ahead and recognize you know where you were in the fight, what you had to do to keep the fight going, and and you, uh, you know, we've all had a, a Z fight, maybe not go exactly according to script, but appropriately enough, understanding the script of Zeromus uh, enabled you to go ahead and finish it anyway. Yeah, and that uh, counter nuke who th hit that um, hit that um, pile. I was hoping if it's a if it hits Worm, Cecil, or Reflector off the edge, I'll be fine. Anything else, it's just, okay, I have to recover quickly or else I have to take a reset out of this. I just stick it to the end, just hopefully I... It was enough to survive an unnerved big man. Apparently, it was. Even without uh, being t sand and all that stuff, and I didn't... The only reason I looted is just to loot, uh, get enough money to get all the stuff that I was expecting uh, starter kit stuff, but, eh, whatever, and... With T standard, uh, T standard stuff, and you are hurting for gear. Um, you have to lean on mages because all they need is levels to get through anything. Yep. Um, and the game was kind and said, "Here, have two mages to start that uh, do great with a D machine grind." Yeah, yep. that was in the back of my mind. It's like, okay, when I saw that darkness, it was early. It's like, okay. Uh, Demon is on the table, and was and we came up early for food. It's like, okay, I'll I'll bite. I'll do the D machine. I grind. It's something that I don't do it often, but there's a few times that I should have done it. Like where I was, where I was. Like, okay, I have everyone set up to slingshot. Just go ahead and do it, and just pull up everything else. And and after that, luckily I didn't went to the moon, I was like, you know what? Some might, some say just go up to the moon, blow it blow up, and hope you find a pass there. And for me, it's like, I only have the darkness and the poke at the moment. I'm going to full clear underground, because you have to go underground to do four, so that's why I went to do the hook route, just to get that sub, so if I, somehow I find both half of some forge down there, great, I'm already down there. If not, the path to underground is relatively easily opened up, so that's basically the routing I went with. Well, and it worked out great for you. Well, I think that's uh, all I have. Um, if, uh, any other final thoughts on the seed warning? Um, I came, I came into um, watching this community around uh, Gauntlet where in which uh, objectives was a thing, and this was before that, so. I was prepared to say I kind of like the whole Jackson system, but this whole um, doing the forge, uh, find both half, find both half of the forge, get on the ground, and Zeroma's access is, is kind of like part luck, part okay, how fa quickly can you get through those checks? But somehow with this seed, seed, this race itself, I I made the right choices, and I've been rewarded. Uh, finishing first in this uh, community race, which is like mind blowing to me. Oh, it's uh, it's uh, it's awesome, dude. GG's, congratulations, and uh, that's uh, it was fun for us to watch you and and uh, put on such a show for us. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, uh, thank you to both Ellie and John for doing the comms, Esperon for pushing like only uh, six buttons for me. 
and then and Oscar for rolling the seed and somehow I just somehow I did the right place and um, being the first um, winning this whole community race is like mind blowing right me. I'm just I I can't comprehend. So thank you for everyone else out there watching it and all that stuff. Until next time, take care and have a good night. Have a wonderful night. GG's again. Thank you so much, GG's. So that was your first place finisher, uh, both on Restream and overall, and one hour, 13 minutes, uh, Warlink uh, 05, but not quite the show for us. Um, meanwhile, uh, our runners uh, have uh, shown us a lot of the rest of the game. I think my favorite part about what Tybalt just went through was the fact that he had, and has, a Yon of 5400 HP that Bygan still found a way to go ahead and kill. Yeah, that that Bygan was uh, very punchy, very angry. I don't mess with Bygan in that location. Yeah, no, that's not a good spot. That Bygan at the wrong spot is awful, and that is one of the worst spots to go ahead and find him. But Tybalt, able to go ahead and get through, uh, is now doing what's a relatively quick check, uh, because you can go ahead and uh, reset out of it quickly with Luca. We still, like, I wasn't really paying attention to the spoiler log, so I don't quite know what's here. Um... Uh, but Tybalt will more than likely, um, unless it's exactly Tower Key, because uh, we already know where the pan is, that's behind Sheila 1, uh, will more than likely be going ahead and resetting out of this. And our tracker Escrunt letting us know that it is exactly that Tower Key, so this will be something Tybalt will be walking out. That's so mean. That's so incredibly mean. Like I see, see, I, now I'm feeling guilty. It, it's it's uh, uh, the the Irish Catholic guilt I was raised on. You know, I I had made I had made some haha jokes about you know causing pain for the runners, but now that I'm actually watching it, I actually like I love watching Pebble run. Dude's awesome, and you know the so like that's selfishly that's great, but I feel I feel bad because again, these runners didn't do anything wrong. It's just the way the seed panned out. Yep. Um, with any luck, this boss will be something very quick to get through, um, so that that'll put Tybalt on the right track. Um, and Fiery Blizzard taking on the uh, Naga Sisters here. Oh. And I believe that um, he's currently anchored. I mean, this is free because the Adamant Armor, but he's also currently anchored with an Adamant Palum. And I believe the agility for Evil Wall here is 66? Sure. Feels right. Probably wrong, but it feels right, so we're just going to go ahead and go with it. And again, it's free, it's fine. Um, you know, his party is so incredibly absurd that, uh, you know, this won't be too bad. Um, but in most situations, uh, this little slice of vanilla, or scoop of vanilla, I suppose, is really not what you want to find. No, uh... But gets through it very quickly. Um, turns out white and nuke are good spells. They are. I should use them more often. Well, then you gotta do so many D machines or sirens. Yeah, or in the case of uh, Tybalt and Fiery, just play the whole game. Play the whole game. Let's see, Cecil with a crystal sword and adamant armor is where it's at. Yeah, uh, even on vanilla agility, I feel like at that point, agility just doesn't matter. Cecil go burr. As the Adamant Cup taught us, uh, yeah, Cecil go burn. Yeah. So for Tybalt, we're really hoping that uh, since he is so tantalizingly close to uh, Dwarf Castle, that he goes ahead and swings by. But again, I can understand number one, wanting to go ahead and follow your chains that you get from other places. Uh, and number two, um, since it's two bosses and we're not really worried about food spells at this point, uh, not want to go there. So let's see what he does. That Luka key came from Baron Inn, so that wasn't a moon check that he routed. Um, so let's see where he goes. Looks like is heading to that dwarf castle. Um, might realize, hey, this was a really, this looks like a really long check. Um, and thinking, I, my opponents might not have done this. Uh, the Luka key check. And I know that there are people done, so... Yep. Also, maybe a little bit of metagaming on, you know, someone's done, it was a spot that, you know, maybe it was a spot that was easy to get to, so let me go ahead and do this now real quick. Um, I mean, with the way his party is, there are no difficult checks. I mean, I mean, 
the, the I mean his his Z fight is gonna be comical um, with with how quickly he gets through it. So at this point, it might just be you know regardless of, of you know where you got the key item from. I'm here. Let me just go ahead and blow this up real quick. Yep, I believe Tybalt has two adamant armors at this point. So, uh, yeah, everything go burr. Everything go burr, or boom, or I'm not sure. Looks like Fiery's gonna get through uh, by again. I believe Fiery already took on the Magus Sisters, so I can certainly understand uh, once you have one part of Forge, you're one key out of the way, you're right here. Let's go ahead and take this out. Uh, so we'll see where Fiery uh, goes ahead and goes next. And to about getting a spell off before the uh, speech even starts, uh, no, you fall into the deep ravine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that spot, not exactly uh, the fastest in the world, and uh, even Adam and Powell can go nice and quick. I believe this is Ruby here, and... Is this a... It is. We'll see what Tybalt does here, anchoring-wise. Oh. Yep, we're, uh, we're getting set up to go ahead and be anchored here, uh, almost certainly. Uh, we'll see if Cecil gets taken out first. Um, yep. So, uh, really heads up. Um, making the same uh, decision that... Uh, did he name Cecil Umaro? Umaro? Really? I mean, give him a Avenger and a Crystal Sword and he go burr. Like, is that like the same as like a Blizzard Orb? I guess? Is it the hair? It might be the hair. It's probably the hair. I suppose. Oh. I do believe that we are joined by uh, one of our current PPL leaders on the leaderboard, uh, eNinja81. eNinja GG's, and how are you, sir? Good. Eh, except for a few technical issues. I believe we had an emulator crash on you? Yeah, and there was a few times where it just kind of uh, stuttered real bad. Had some real oh. bad stutters. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you were one of our uh, few runners that went underground, and you had half a forge. You were halfway there, um, so I'm really sorry to hear that because you were uh, your instincts were correct, and I think you were uh, probably very likely to get into go mode pretty quickly. Um, if you haven't seen the spoilers by now, or if you're watching the stream, you're about to see Tybalt go ahead and get his legend sword right now. Mm, so what I was thinking is. I was thinking Forge, the other part of Forge, and what I was doing was Baron Castle. I was thinking maybe Baron Castle, because mm -hmm. there's two possible checks there. Probably not. I mean, it makes sense, you know, go for density of checks. Um, you know, we've talked on this stream that with uh, Warp Glitch being off, Dwarf Castle isn't as attractive because it is no longer two key item checks. It's only no. one, plus you have to get through two bosses. And the only other thing I could have thought of was doing that Fate March, and that was a nasty Fate March. Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> actually, one of them, actually one of them was free for me, in theory, because I had two moon bells. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, the, bi the biken spot would have been free. Yeah, those vampires might have still been a little bit rude. Oh, oh no, I guess the vampires would have been reflected. Uh, yeah, as long as you don't uh, get bogged down with the explodes, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, I had two moon bells, so. So how did it feel doing the um, the older? Um... Uh, the other flag set. Uh, it was fine. I mean, I I didn't have a problem with it. Were there any uh, flags that kind of tripped you up a little bit when you first looked at it, or, um, I guess when did you come into the community? That's kind of what we've been gauging. Uh, when did everybody come in, and what did they learn on? Uh, I actually started doing seeds about a month before Lally Ho League. Uh, so you um, you came in with the objective system in place. Yes. Yeah, I came in. Was it just as the objective system came in place, or a little bit after? Yep, a little bit after. Um, and was there anything kind of else about that seed that kind of stood out to you at all? Uh, not really. 
I, 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 did, I did notice one flag, and I was thinking something, and I was like, oh wait, never mind. I saw it said, uh, it said E, no J items, but I, then I saw it said, uh, as standard, so I was like, oh, J items are still in shops. Kind of threw me out there for a second, and I was like, oh, no, never mind. Yep, uh, they just cannot drop from bosses, or, uh, you cannot steal them. Yeah. Which was Which fine. But you, a little mean, because you have your uh, edge and your porum, you're all set up to go ahead and do your cry strats, because, uh, uh, Ninja, am I correct that you you know a little something about this game? Is that is that correct? Have I heard uh, that I, don't, I don't know. Oh, you don't know anything about this game. Oh, okay. No. okay. Nah. It was one or the other. Like I can I can never keep track. Okay. I, I appreciate you clarifying uh, that on restream. Thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for running. Um, you know, uh, again, you've been doing uh, uh, quite well uh, with Pink Pop League and uh, and uh, all of our silly jokes aside, showing off uh, your acumen and your knowledge. Um, any final thoughts about the, the scene, Chris? Uh, no, it was pretty fun. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for running. Uh, yep. Very sorry to hear about your emulator crashes. Get that figured out so you can keep on uh, giving us amazing content with uh, Pink Pop League and Ladder and everything else that you do. You're a huge part of this community. And thank you for running tonight. Yep, you have a good night. Take care, Ben. Uh, so that was eNinja81. Um, uh, that's actually a nice segue uh, to talk about not just uh, Ninja or uh, our other runners, um, uh, but really just about the community in general. Uh, as Irie Blizzard does go ahead and follow that power key to the gauntlet, because of course it's the gauntlet. With, and it's not all gauntlet, it's not just five, but it's it's six, six battles that he'll have to go ahead and go through there. Um, please go ahead and give our runners a follow. Um, uh, these are all wonderful runners. Uh, Warlink has been around for a while, uh, as has Ninja. Ninja, Fiery, and Tybalt are both uh, pretty often on the ladder. Um, so you get a lot of really wonderful content from them. Uh, Warlink has been around for a long time. Uh, so you, you, you know, and clearly his, uh, you know, his abilities were on display for us uh, for tonight. Um, uh, Asuka, uh, SMS uh, specialist, uh, does a lot of restreaming, a lot of work, um, is uh, one of, if not the pioneer of the Pink Pup League, um, where some of our newer runners um, go ahead and uh, get to go ahead and go week by week learning more and more um, about, the, uh, about the flags, about how free enterprise works. Uh, and Alice, uh, you know, just, it, it's, it's been so fun uh, just talking with you tonight because uh, as someone who wasn't around for as long as you have just to hear the stories and kind of learn about how you know the chronology and the evolution of how we got to this amazing community as we have it now it has been so such a pleasure for me tonight to go ahead and learn from you well it's been a huge pleasure for me you are just so much fun to talk to uh, and I've laughed and just really enjoyed this so thank you for joining me on the mic tonight uh, my pleasure uh, it, it's it's kind of nice to you know because we talk about how like this game without the people we we wouldn't have a randomizer that we do um, and so when we get to go ahead and interact whether it's on the Discord that if you're not following you absolutely should um, it's been kind of fun for me to go ahead and kind of see how you know not only a little bit of a, a brief synopsis as to how we've gotten to where we are. But it also makes me excited to see where we're going to go ahead and go. You know, ZZ5 had over 100 participants with the dual uh, tournament um, uh, format. Um, you know, seeing the current batch of Pink Pups and, and watching them uh, get so much better so <laughs> so quickly and what they're absorbing. Um, it's just, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned off stream uh, that you uh, are doing a couple of, of uh, tournaments with Free Enterprise. And I know that... Um, Cubs uh, has put together something for Multifon uh, in February. Um, uh, Scala, our, uh, who I refer to as the heart soul of Free Enterprise, also in that Multifon uh, streaming haven. It's just really exciting to see just such a wonderful group of people with this incredible randomizer. And uh, we get a little glimpse into the past with uh, these old flags. And it makes us very uh, excited to see what's coming up in the future. Definitely. Um, as I said before, this is one of the best communities I have ever encountered. Um, everyone's so kind. There is no, um, we don't hoard knowledge. 
if somebody finds something different or strange or cool, you better believe they're sharing it with videos and letting everybody know new tech. And everybody just wants everybody to get better, to be the best players they can. It's true. It, it, it's very true. Um, I can't I can't speak for other randomizers because I've, I've dabbled, but I haven't really dug in like with this one. But um, on reputation, uh, this is just just some of the nicest group of people. And, uh, you know, we could we could all certainly use uh, a little bit of kindness uh, from time to time. And you'll always you'll you'll, you'll always find it here. It's just such a such a wonderful place to spend some time. You know, most of us are adults. Most of us grew up with this game. Um, and to be able to, to spend our time playing games, having fun with wonderful people, it's just, it's such a blast. Uh, you should not look into the fact that Tibble decided to go ahead and cough in Cecil to death just because he's could. I, 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 I swear, nice, nice, kind, good, good people. 100%. We, we, we just sometimes uh, just cough in the, play, uh, the party members because they, they, they need naps. We all they need, need naps. a nap sometimes. Which is why Porum gets coughing probably more often than not. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And looks like that spell uh, window isn't going anywhere. Michael Jordan is, uh, much to your Chicago heart, I'm sorry to say, uh, going down. Uh, that is our second place uh, finisher, Typhle the, uh, the Gambler, with a uh, time of 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 45 seconds. He gave us a lovely world tour of all the key, uh, basically all the Keanu spots that we could possibly have. Uh, so GG's to Tybalt for a job well done. And uh, looks like uh, he'll be joining us for an interview uh, in a little bit. And Fiery did go ahead and check those locations. Uh, not finding anything, of course, in the tower. We knew that it didn't have anything, although I don't know that we've seen where the pass is. We haven't, and if anyone deserves the pass, it's Fiery. But that's not the pass. Uh, looks like Fiery's gonna go set up Sheila 1, which uh, he will hilariously find is, in fact, uh, the pan. Which, if he's gonna go ahead and follow that, is gonna lead to a pan bonk. Uh, does anyone know where the Baron Key came from? Baron Key came from Bygen. From Bygen. Uh... That's 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 awful. That's just awful. Uh, but me, I know. to you, Tibble. Jeez, geez, that moon was completely haunted. <laughs> it was. Um, uh, so uh, before we get into uh, your uh, adventures in routing, um, all of which made total sense, by the way. You know, you get your party ready to go. <laughs> you know, the density of checks. Uh, K Moon is on. Uh, what are your overall thoughts about the scene in general? You know, I, I'm i kicking myself for my team money grind. <laughs> Usually I get burned by it, and well, I was, even though I did it, I was still burned by it, so, you know. I didn't feel it was too bad. Like, I kind of regretted not taking the edge over Yong. I was thinking about, like, wait, no, he would have been better for Slingshot. Oh, yeah. It is what it is. I mean, you know, I mean, you have the opportunity to get massive levels. I mean, you, you started with a, a massive, but you still have a short sword as your other weapon. And, you know, you get Yang to absurd levels, which uh, I think at one point you had, what, 5,400 uh, HP on him before you ditched him for an anchor at the end. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it makes sense. Uh, and uh, some high-ranking members of the community agreed with your decision. Yeah, I mean, you really when you're doing a flex stats, you really want to make sure you're perfectly anchored for it. And it's like... Oh, I got Dorfax still. Okay. Oh, hi. Perfect anchor. Yay. Did you remember that it was vanilla agility? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. That's something However, I might have done. Yeah. However, I did <laughs> I did miss that it was adamant we're on until, you know, I looped the ribbon room and it was just like, here, have an adamant armor and an arty bow. Okay. Yeah, just just a casual adamant armor. It's fine. Just chill them. Right? I'm like, uh, uh, uh mm. yeah, not to we, mention the amount of vanilla in this scene. Mm. Yeah, there was quite a bit of that. Um, uh, we were very glad that uh, you didn't chase the tower key, which would have been very, very, very tempting, because it turns out the gauntlet was in the uh, super gauntlet room, or super cannon room. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I, mean, I uh, had power with every spell. Like, it's not going to take that long. It's going to take a bit, but I mean, not that long. I think it's just the uh, the trolling, right? Yeah. It's just the, <laughs> the amount of trolling in this seed and the amount of vanilla 
I swear it was rolled by somebody else, not Asuka. <laughs> I, what in the Dathus could you possibly be talking about? I don't yeah, I know, right? I mean, it was an evil wall gang. <laughs> um, what what else was there that was also uh, there? There were a couple things there. DKC. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you ran it very well. Everything you did made total sense. It's just that you know when you have twenty eight uh, checks and you're only looking for two things, uh, sometimes things aren't where you go. Uh, I think wise words I heard once were just because it didn't work out for this seed, it doesn't mean it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the wrong play. I don't oh, necessarily yeah. think it was the wrong play. I think it just didn't go your way tonight. Oh yeah, that, and I'm really out of practice when it comes to the D machine grind. <laughs> like really out of practice, if you couldn't tell. Well, I think you got some refs back in tonight. I think we're getting back in shape. I mean, I thought about, it's like, wait, I got two mages and a foo. It's going to be a reflect. I need to get nuke and white. All right, here we go. 12 by 12. Well, and it's, you know, club season. Best time to start getting ready for whenever the next tournament season starts. Um, better, to, better to start now than game one of a tournament. This is also true. You get all the mistakes out of the way beforehand. I mean, you always put up a, a strong show in the tournaments, and uh, we, we were talking about your performance on ladder uh, recently. Um, and uh, I've been uh, uh, Elvin Saro and I've been watching uh, your and jo uh, Joe's work on um, with the tangos too. I mean, you're, you're just you're you're one of those guys. You're one of those runners in this community. So uh, it's always fun to watch your race. All shocks, thank you. Of course. <laughs> Um, but one more question for you, because since this was a, uh, a throwback seed, when did you come into the community? Uh, I came, you know, like, so I joined the Discord, uh, just around the Hopin time frame, but, uh, I actually started really playing for Enterprise, uh, during the, after the announcement of the Fabul Gauntlet. That was what I remembered, but then I was like, well, that was me. Was that Tybalt too? <laughs> Yeah, so my actual first tournament was the Fabul Gauntlet. I've been around for a while. <laughs> yep. Yep, so you remember the, the olden days of uh, Forge Percent. Uh, we didn't really have... CC3 uh, wasn't Forge Percent. There was, like, Fabul Gauntlet is when the objectives first came out with the alternative Gauntlet. Yep. Fun times. And then push B to jump came out later, and then we had the wacky flags. We're, ha know. we're having we're having a nice conversation. Why would you bring up push B to jump? If there are any puffs in the uh, in the chat right now that are being triggered, uh, uh, that's uh, oh, oh, oh. I, mean, I mean, look at my, look at the sprite that's chatted right now. It's Benjamin from Mystic Quest, which you jump in that game. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if I was if I was good at it, I think I'd have a completely different viewpoint. But I am just, I'm the I'm the worst. I'm just the worst. Coming out of uh, ordeals, I, you know, I'll skip over the bosses there, but then I'll trigger the boss on the way back. I'll forget about Earth Crystal. I'll I I, I don't know. Oh oh, that black set makes me. Whew. Oh. It's tricky. You, you know, you gotta remember, and sometimes you forget. Even I do it myself, especially on ordeals. Yeah. And then trying to get the jumps in, like, the Ribbon Room are a bit tricky. The Ribbon Room? Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As it was. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh. Like I said, not a great runner. And there you are, showing off your, your expertise and your experience, my friend. But, uh, any last-minute thoughts? Any last-minute questions? Uh, anything you want to shout out, Tibble? No, not at all. I, you know, I I felt you know I, I felt like I routed decently well. Just that those D machines, and then of course, don't forget, don't take for granted your starter kits. Those starter kits are so nice. Having to walk out of ordeals and then to go shopping for life potions and tents and cabins <laughs> felt really bad. I mean, you could have sold that oh, mask, yeah. though, right? <laughs> Plenty of money. Oh yeah, plenty of money. I just who's gonna go shopping in S standard in the overworld? Nine times out of ten, you you have a starter kit. You usually start with cure twos, life potions, maybe a tent or two in your gold. No, yeah, no, not back then. 
No, not back then. You had to walk uphill both ways, 10 miles in the snow, just to get one cure to... <laughs> you had to walk up ordeals both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Was, in fact, an ordeal. Exactly. You had to find a small oh. child to put out flames of fire just so you could go. It was a whole thing. Back in the day. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Alright, boss. Well, well, yeah, I, I, that's all for me. Thanks for you know, thanks for the restream. These are always fun races to do. We may be racing, but y'all put on the show, commentating, explaining everything, and kind of being the voice for us racers when we're racing. So. Well, thank you so much, and it's always a pleasure to watch you race, Pibble. All right. Thanks again to Oscar for restreaming and Eskrin for doing the tracking. Have a good one, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Hey, more vanilla. There's Sid. So uh, that was our second place finisher, uh, finisher Tybalt, with an hour time of one hour forty two minutes and forty five seconds. Um, I think this has to be the spoon, and I don't think there's literally anything else for Fiery to do. Uh, yep. Unless, hopefully, Fiery hasn't forgotten that he hasn't done Dwarf Castle. I mean, you know, we talk about, you know, you know, when you make a fade, you stick to your fade. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, outside looking in, you can look at the disparity in times and go, oh, what happened? Nothing happened. It's just rando going to be rando when you only have two objectives and you have 28 spots that you can go. Um, Fiery did absolutely nothing wrong. It's just, it's a literal last location. Um... And it looks like we are heading straight to Dwarf now, because Fiery knows that it absolutely has to be here. Yep. Although Fiery finding the path also does not have to walk the lunar subterrain, um, so it's going to save quite a bit of time there. Yep. Are we buying some memes, or are we... Oh, no. Just a very... Con that's very, very, uh, very budget-conscious there. If I had... I don't know, what was that? 110,000 literal pieces of gold, right? GP. I'm literally in possession on my back, apparently, of 110,000 pieces of gold. I'm not going to lie, Allie, I'd buy more than two glasses of wine. Uh, I am a big fan of buying as much Bacchus wine as uh, your money can purchase. I uh, I can respect that. Uh, Ninja is well known for buying 50 Bacchus wines. That seems to be his magic number. I mean, if the seed's going to give you enough money to buy 75 Bacchus wines, who am I to say that you're not going to use 75 Bacchus wines? Listen, it's 5 o'clock somewhere. All right. Uh, so, in terms of actual gameplay, however, uh, that spoon might actually go ahead and help with the reflect strats. Um, if you are new to the community or you've kind of lurked a little bit and you've heard about the reflect strats and you're not quite sure uh, how they work, um... Zeromus has uh, over 110,000 HP, but it doesn't uh, work that way exactly. Uh, there's a refill that's triggered um, at about the 41,000 mark. So um, if you can go ahead and do reflected damage, the refill will never happen. The refill is a counter, and in this game, you can't counter a counter. So you can do direct attacks like, oh, well, I don't know, throwing a spoon for 10,000 damage on your way to that 41,000. Um, uh, without it causing a tip, and then as long as you are reflecting damage up until 61,000, or the last attack can be direct, um, you then, you don't trigger the refill and the fight goes faster. Uh, so that spoon might, uh, go ahead and make his Z fight a little bit quicker, which is, uh, certainly well deserved. Now, um, you might wonder, well, why doesn't everyone use reflect straps then? But... If you don't have mages that know nuke, uh, that can always uh, be the problem. And sometimes, I mean, nuke is a long spell to watch. White is a really long spell to watch. Uh, it's also a very long spell to cast, too. Uh, nuke tends to be pretty instant, whereas white can take a little while. But there is the Legend Sword for Fiery Blizzard. And hopefully he'll go ahead and remember to... Um... Forge it so he can he can get his crystal, and he does, which is great. Um, Fiery did not take that Cecil, so um, 
I had to guess we'll probably be anchoring with a uh, with Fu over at twenty, um, which is fine. Uh, another thing, another reason why you might not do reflex strats is you might not have your anchoring completely set up. Um, so we'll see if this causes any kind of problems. Uh, but Fiery is a very good runner. Um, I'm sure that uh, the Z fight is more than likely going to be a clinic, and we will be on our way. And it looks like there might be something that Fiery wants to buy here. Maybe those Zeus gauntlets, or that life staff, or just sell everything. Yeah, speaking of darts, he's got uh, two x cows on top of that spoon. Um, and maybe that white spear is going to be an extra dart as well. So uh, looks like Edge might be on darting duty there. Or might take those two Bacchus wines and uh, zerk up Edge and Kane. Huh, could be. I uh, don't think I've ever even realized that Kane's in the party. That makes a lot of sense. He is Mr. Patently Average. <laughs> yeah, a little weird trigger. Uh, get some people pretty upset in chat there. Uh, hopefully, uh, one misstep lively is not nearby. Um, I, I was going straight for Dathis, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm doing a little bit of. This might be just because we can. <laughs> At this point, um, while Fiery is perhaps deciding to go ahead and grind after doing the entire game with our 17 out of 17, uh, we do have a couple of off-stream finishers. Scythe Marshall has finished in third place with a time of 1 hour, 53 minutes, and 5 seconds. And Twisted Flax has finished in fourth place with a time of 1 hour, 57 minutes, and 22 seconds. So, GG's for them. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's grind. Let's go. I think we have 10 key items, right? So, uh, probably a good time to go ahead and do that. Um, and I do believe, uh, might be wanting to get Nuke on, uh, Palum. I don't think he has it yet. Oh, wow. That's, uh, well, that's a, because I guess Fiery, uh, either didn't, I, I, I think he rushed the moon, right? Because then he went to Octoman, got through it, and then kind of went through that way. Um, yep. so, oh, food, please. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, these eggs have 1,800 HP. Uh, that's just me. Although I can understand the old man being tired after, uh, you know, traveling to the moon back a few times. Um, so yeah, this might not be a meme. This is literally getting... Oh, yeah, there's white on forum, and there's new gun pal. Good call, Alec. Uh, so, uh, my apologies. I thought after, uh, uh, everything that they had been through that we went ahead and had it. Looks like we might have a bit of an agility check here. Uh, looks like that's Adamant Fu with 35, and that's Adamant Palum. Uh, pretty speedy party that we have here. Uh, and ooh, are we going 42? Uh, we are. So, uh, there tend to be uh, magic numbers when it comes to agility and the Zeromas fight. Uh, very long story short, uh, with aim at a uh, at, at 42 that means that Zeromus is going to be at what's called RA3 um, which is relative agility 3 it's going to take uh, Zeromus 3 ticks to go ahead and get an action off and the rest of his party won't be too too far behind uh, this does make doing uh, reflect strats a little bit trickier um, so we'll see how this all works out Yep, um, depending on, of course, what your relative agility is, kind of tells you what you want your battle speed to be set on unless you're doing just straight Berserker strats. Yep, uh, he certainly has the power overwhelming. Uh, he did buy the, uh, uh, the White Spear. Um, there is an Avenger in the inventory, uh, which is just huge for Z-Fight, so this might be a hybrid. Um, either way, I think we're going to be just fine. Battle speed 3 means we're going to be throwing some spells around for sure. Uh, it looks like your trolling worked. Uh, you were able to go ahead and summon a Dathus from where there was no Dathus before. That's very impressive, Alec. I mean... We're getting our spells set up. We got white at the top. We got cure 4 at the top. So we're going to get some quick menuing. So instead of having to do this, you know, five or six times, you only do it once, which is great. And we are going to be heading into our Z fight. I always say that I'm going to move my spells to where I need them, and then I never remember. My problem is when I move Blake and Berserk, I never move. I need to make a decision. Like I, I'm pretty good about 
actually remembering to move my spells, although it's always a bit of a mess when I do. I never do it very smoothly. But I never put Blink and Berserk at the same spot. And I really just need to make a decision, like, where they're going to be. Because then I go to go ahead and move them, and I'm like, oh, where are they? And then I end up scrolling down to where they would normally be, and I end up taking up more time than otherwise. So I need I need to plan, Allie. I need to figure out where exactly my spells are going to go ahead and go when I move them. So I feel like I've started the process of, like, I'm going to move them, but moving them into a logical place is what I need to do next. That's what I have to do with life potions. They have to be in the first slot in the inventory, or I can't get a life glitch off. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good point, too. Uh, I've definitely had a few panics. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> But here we go. Fiery Blizzard is going ahead, getting to the correct character that he wants to throw that crystal with. Which I believe is probably going to be Kane. And then we'll probably put up a veil on edge, and then off we go. Oh, no, because Porm's going to throw it. So I'll be curious to see if we are going straight reflect or if we are going ahead and we're going to do some hybrid. We are on BS3. Um, Alright, so the Star Veil does go up. Um, if you take actions too quickly, especially on a lower battle speed in the Z fight, um, you'll have queued up the action before Zeromus is actually ready to go ahead and go. So if you throw something too quick, like a silk web or a dart, or you cast a spell too quickly, sometimes it doesn't go. So that little pause that you just saw there from Pal uh, from Pal on Palum from Fiery was trying to go ahead and counteract that. So that's a good bit of gameplay there. And even with that little uh, pause, still does not uh, was not fully formed. Uh, so that nuke did not go through. Fortunately, that nerf does go, um, and with great RNG, which, let's be honest, uh, Fiery absolutely deserves, um, uh, it hits, uh, hits as you start bail. So judging by the fact that Kane Perry tells me that we are heading toward the flex strats here. So we have our first shape, uh, we got about 2,000 damage, uh, there, uh, with a reflected, and then another 10, so we're about, uh, 12k. I'm going to try to keep track here as we are on a great 61. Uh, I believe that's an adamant palum. I'd be shocked if this was anything short of quad nines. Well, there it is. And there's Porum throwing off the light. Yeah. You know, I guess my expectations for eight-year-olds that know magic powers to uh, be a little bit higher than other people. They'll get there eventually. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're at about 29,000 uh, worth of damage, and with this Foo, uh, that's a 9,500, so we're at about, we'll, we'll say around 38. Um, we need to get to 61 reflected. Um, as we said earlier, the, the, as long as the last spell, it can be direct, as long as it kills. Uh, parrying here is a good decision. Uh, it's very impressive with a fast anchor to go ahead and still pull up the flex straps. This is really well done by our Blizzard. And I'd like to say that lowering the battle speed is the key to this. Do not try to do this on battle speed one. Correct. Uh, the uh, the silk web also helps as well because I believe that will take him from RA three to RA six, which makes him slower than the rest of the party here. So this reflected white should go ahead and do the trick. Uh, he could even throw an X if he wanted to. Uh, we'll see if this nuke gets off first, but I believe that this spell will go ahead and do it. Because we're at 58,000 damage done already, so this should go ahead and kill. And it does. Beautifully done. Fiery Blizzard uh, uh, committing to his fades, which is uh, one of the... Uh, you know, one of the staples of being a solid runner, unfortunately, just sent him all over the world. But that was more content for us finishing at 2 hours, 5 minutes, and 47 seconds. GG's Fire Blizzard, who has joined us. Heidi ho neighborino. How are you? Oh, man. You know, I figured I was going to roll to see that bird fired Boone, and it turned out it did not. <laughs> That's, uh, that makes sense. Honestly, uh, I, I just saw the free win hook round. I'm just like... I don't want to do this. Like, it was a free hook round, and I just was like, let's just go to the moon. 
Uh, it well, makes sense. Getting through that Octoman, um, yeah, if that, if that harp had have been, uh, something like the Legend Sword or the Adamant Rock, that would have been the play of the night. Or any of the moon? <laughs> that too. <laughs> Demis, Demis did lead to an Adamant Armor, so it was actually, when I got to harp, I looked at the flags and I'm like, wait a minute, adamant armors are on. I really hope there wasn't one in Eblin, although it's standard, T-standard, so every trap chest has the exact same chance to throw an adamant armor in there. Yeah, there were with, no adamant armors there. Okay. Yeah, with, the, with, the, with the traps that we saw taken, none of them led to either a holy sword, although no, we were successful for anything other than anchoring, um, uh, that we didn't see any holy swords or adamant armors. Okay. I, I was just pulling, like, after I was clearing the moon, I'm just like, I'm going to pull a couple of these trap chests for no other reason other than let's give content. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you have adamant armor, so it's relatively safe anyways, because Ribbon gave me an adamant armor. And I'm just like, okay, who's going to survive? Well, and then the rat tail leading immediately into the pink tail. It's always great to see, isn't it? Of course. But yeah, the uh, Octo giving Earth Crystal into Harp. I was like, okay, at least it's some music. And that gives a power share. I'm just like, I'm not surprised. Yeah, we, we had made comments that this was either going to put you way, way, way ahead because you were the first one to go to the moon. And uh, and then you followed it, you know, boldly, you know. Uh, often runners will talk about the difference between, like, playing to win and playing not to lose. And, and you were playing to win. Like, you're following it. Like, let's, let's go. And if that had it, you would have been light years ahead. It just didn't work. It just didn't go your favor, unfortunately. I mean, I would have been surprised if it did, because it normally doesn't. <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, no, it was fun. I mean, I have a few. See what I can do, honestly. I like how I pulled a random hourglass, too, from a chest that I opened up on the way to the Murasame altar. Which gave yeah, it in handy. Was, that was gutsy. Uh, which one did you use it for? I'm sorry, with four runners, I must have missed it. Uh, I used it for the Baron Guards. Oh. No, actually, no, sorry, I used it for DMs in the Ribbon Room. Oh, that's a great spot. Which then I decided to life glitch two of them. Which I almost gave it as much XP as it would if I actually went to the moon with 10 key items. <laughs> yeah, but it's more but, fun to rush the moon, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It, it, like I said, especially with a few, it's just. I didn't want to go underground. I was like, eh, it's gotta be a magma key, right? <laughs> but, no, no such thing. I, I, I was really tempted at the end of the sea to go to Agar and drop the magma key down the well. <laughs> really hilarious. tempted. We, we were talking about the, um, uh, you know, the the funny things that the NPCs will say when you uh, when you talk to them, and one of my favorite things, uh, and I don't know who put it in, Allie, maybe you know, uh, so if you've you know if you've done the hook route and then you drop the magma key, they just go, well, that's gone. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, I was also thinking it's like okay, I have a few. I don't really want a D machine, so let's not do that. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean the moon was relatively free and then completely free once you get the adamant armor. Uh, although I think it probably would have been a different story if I didn't randomly pull that hourglass out. Because those DMs in Ribbon would have just killed my party. Yeah, Dimps there are very angry. Yeah, and the Fu was not hitting a stone cast at all tonight, so... <laughs> As is tradition. Yeah. No, I, I saw that Demon, so I was excited. I was like, hmm, okay, this would be spicy too. But... Yeah, I mean, take gambles in community races. It's not something I would do in a 1v1. Uh, Judge Joe, I'll leave that to Judge Joe. Yeah, yeah he, he, he kind of has the market cordon on that, and he does it so well. Yeah, I mean, you figure... I look at that Octo, I'm like, I bought Illusions. I can do this. So I just need to get past, like, the first two forms, and then it would be fine. Right? Once you get past that, it's pretty stable, because you're going to cast more blinks, and Octo will actually take attacks. No, it was fun. Uh, T standard's always interesting, I think, uh, because you're not. You're pretty limited in what you can actually grab from the chess. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's a random tier one through five. So, uh, 
It's it, you are you are hampered. There's no question. You you could also make an argument that T Pro is actually easier because it's still weighted, so you can go to your F1 spots or your watery uh, your watery passes, and um, you know you have a better chance of of, uh, of pulling something a little more significant. I mean, when I I got a uh, the ice brand was what Kane was using for most of the seed until I pulled the Aventer from somewhere. I think it, where did I get that Aventer from? I don't remember. Somewhere in the game, since you went literally at board time. Yes, <laughs> I figured uh, like I saw Warling being done at 114. I'm like, okay, I feel like everyone else should be finishing around here too. Yeah. yeah. He, he got his god rat on tonight. Yep. I was like, I don't think most other people would have just gone to the moon for, you know, just because. But maybe that is what everyone else did. I don't know. But no, like I said, fun flags up. Uh, you're looking for two key items, and I happen to just miss both of them. <laughs> I got to show everything off in the game except for Giant. So, always fun. But yeah, no, thank you for sticking around and commenting that, John and Ellie. Uh, Escrunt for pushing all the buttons on my screen, and Asuka for the restream. Absolutely, thank you for letting us restream you. I will let you guys go to sleep or have a good night. All right, take care, thank you so much. Alright, well that was quite the seed, Allie. I mean, the uh, the race room at the beginning called it and said 17 of 17. And, uh, sometimes these things just get spoken into existence. Uh, fortunately, we have uh, more community races tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We have our uh, Escron's very own mini mysteries. Um, but I do believe that we are headed off to one of our lovely Free Enterprise community members. Uh, they are going to be running the PPL async, or they are running the PPL async. So if that's something you intend to run, uh, definitely um, head off for the night. But if you want to go see one free fit, one free fits, uh, definitely stick around. So thank you all so much for watching and for supporting Free Enterprise. Um, keep an eye on these community races. Uh, say hey in the Discord, and you all have a wonderful night.